What's up, fellas? Urban Red Pill. You know the slogan, the men first. Top of the food chain. What's going on, my Red Pill brothers? Ha! Huh. Today, I'm going to do a video about a conversation that I had with a purple pillar who is still trying to bargain with the, the bargain with this reality on which we live in as far as this gynocracy in the United States. Um, I'm, I'm going to try to keep this light and nice, but I've had a real bad couple days. So I don't know if I'm getting on this mic to take my grievances out on this freaking channel. Now, we were talking about, as far as I was explaining to him about marriage, even though he understands that it is a scam, he understands that it is biased. We had a we were having a conversation, and the point that he made was, if you have a fifty percent marriage to divorce rate, that means some people are still are. And what happens is he is making a valid point. For every guy that is going through and getting ass raped through a divorce, there's another sucker that's coming up through the ranks that is willing to go ahead and walk through this gauntlet and get his head chopped off. Unfortunately, that's just the reality of it. So the purpose of me making this video is I want to give my opinion on the reason, you know, this psyche of this male that that that, that gets him to, you know, to, to do these things. Because, I mean, I just really can't get my hands around it. I can't grasp the concept of any man that, that in, in 2019, in this day of age, in this environment that we live in, that is still going to the fucking altar. I don't even look at it as an altar anymore. I look at it as a funeral. Those are not weddings. Those are funerals because your soul dies at the altar. Now, I want to give an example on something, some deep thinking that I was doing. And um, so most of you guys have heard of kamikaze pilots. Now, those pilots do, you know, certain types of warfare. What they did was they used those pilots. Basically, those guys already knew. When they took flight for this military, and they were going to pretty much murder themselves as running their own planes into a target for the sake of who knows what, the country, and I mean that C-U-N-T, okay? And you have to sit back and you got to ask yourself, what the fuck could someone say to convince a group of men to jump in a plane and blow themselves up running it into a target. These same men who's built skyscrapers, created electricity, created engineering, pretty much built the whole world. What would make, how do you convince them to go ahead and just murder themselves at kamikaze style? Like, how do you do that? And I'm starting to come to the realization that a lot of time our ego our ego gets in the way of a lot of evolving that we need to do as men. Because if you think about it, running, killing yourself, running yourself for the better or good of who you don't even know, that is closer to a primate than it is to a freaking human. And I just believe that our ego is what keeps constantly getting in the way of us not understanding that this environment that we actually live in. I think that they convince these men just the same way that they're convincing men as we stand right now, that for some reason, which I call voluntary, voluntary slavery, they want you to, they want to brainwash you so bad where they want to actually convince you to actually do something that's rather going to harm you, hurt you, or kill you. And the thing, the reason that why they're able to do that is because they're able to tamper with and swing and sway with your ego. And unfortunately, a lot of guys are, are, are falling for this. I'm going to give an example. I get into arguments with, with, with um, blacks all the time with this. I tell them, I say, listen, you cannot have racism and capitalism. You cannot have the two. The two cannot now... I'm not saying that there is, 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 is no racist people out there. Yes, you have racist people. Matter of fact, you have racist people in all races. 
It's not just a, a, a black and white thing. It's, it's racism in, in, in all in all people. But what I'm trying to explain is you cannot have a racist country and capitalism at the same time. Reason why is because what if you, you know, if you're in a capitalist country and you have a race demographic that happens to have, let's say, a $900 billion spending power, or you have another group over here, they have a $400 billion spending power. Can your bottom line afford to be racist? It can't freaking happen. That's the reason why you see a lot of these, and I know I'm going off a little bit on this, but this is a black pure rant. This is the reason why you have a lot of these networks. They try to, they, they pander to certain, you know, demographics when it comes to quote unquote racism. They don't give a fuck about the person's opinion that they have about this group as a race. All they care about is no, they have a 900 a billion or $500 billion spending power and we don't want to lose those dollars. Imagine if Michael Jordan was racist. Would he be a billionaire right now? So I make that point to say on the flip side, you cannot have traditionalism and feminism. You can't have both. This country is rather a traditionalist country or the country is a feminist country. Now, how do we know which direction is going? All you have to do is ask yourself who's able to talk and who's able, who has to shut the fuck up. Who's able to talk? What views are able to get pushed forward? What views are legislated? And which ones are constantly pushed to the back? Now, I'm not siding with either because uh, traditionalism is also male slavery also. Feminism, we already know what that is. Not, that's beyond male slavery. That's male hatred, male slavery at the same time while still needing men. Now, the trick is this. The trick, the marriage trick, Marriage is a prerequisite to gonocracy. If you think about it, the country has set up all the bases, all the bases. You remember, you have the family courts, feminism, education system, feminism, child custody, feminism, right? If you think about it, once you engage into that union, what happened is all you're doing is you're marrying gonocracy. They're using traditionalism to get guys hyped up about going down that aisle and thinking that they're going to have provision over not only the children. And unfortunately, I don't know what it is. I think guys really want to have ownership over the women. You know, once again, these primate behaviors, these nether ape type behaviors that they want to actually have a document saying that they actually have ownership of the woman, the kids, and of course, all of the things that he brings to the table. They're fine with that. They want you to have that ego. They want your, yes, you know, this is your family. That is your wife. You need to man up. But see, at the end of the day, that is just a prerequisite for you to go ahead and enter, enter gynocracy. Once you sign that license, they got that, that contract. They got your ass. They know this. They got you. Once you sign, you're in. You're locked in, loaded. Now they have the say so, of course, and it's going to be all geared towards what's the betterment of the woman. They have the say so on everything from your assets to your children to the schools they go through, go to everything. So another thing that they've also done. Of course, one thing about wealthy people, one thing about very successful people is one thing that they do not do is they do not let a lot of things come in between them and their money. So you can't have wealthy, successful men not willing to engage in this, you know, gonocracy cutting board. They, you know, they can't have that because what's happening is they're not going to gain the favor of the women. So what they've done to ease the anxiety with guys who have more money is they created a charming prenup. That's what I call it. It's a charming prenup. What they're saying is, okay, here's a document showing that you're able to hide your, you know, in other words, divide your assets, whatever it is, you could go ahead and chalk it all up on paper. But see, the small writing, the writing, you know, when they do terms and conditions that they don't want you to see, they put it in small writing. That small writing is to the judge's discretion. This Charmin prenup is only good 
and, and valid depending on the actual judge's discretion. Now, what the fuck does that mean? I don't know. What, if the judge has a bad day, you happen to walk your ass in there and with a divorce with some prenup and she's crying, what are they going to do? Chances are they're going to dry her tears with your checkbook. That's what's going to happen. So those no longer work. And the reality is this, fellas. Nobody really gives a fuck about you. As a matter of fact, you have to look at it as you ever look at bees and you ever notice that, you know, the, 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 you know, they looking for, the, you know, the bees are with the stingers are the ones that have the work. Once the stinger is gone, like the bee just die. It really doesn't have any worth. So basically the way this country really looks at you is especially men have, like, like I'll give you an example real quick. I've noticed this. I've seen this with my own eyes where if there is a guy that has been married and divorced and he decides that he does not want to play the game anymore, he's checked out, he does not get any type of outrage. The only way he will is if he actually, after, after the dust settled, he still has millions of dollars. But the average Joe, and you tell someone, hey, I'm out of the, I got divorced, I'm never playing the game again, or I've been divorced twice, I'm never playing the game again. You will get a nod from a female counterpart like, yeah, because basically what she's telling you is you don't have a stinger. You're no longer a, a worker bee. Your stinger is gone. Let you go to that same person, that same woman, and say that you've never been married and you don't have any kids, but you just made a logical decision to not play the mating game anymore. They're going to blow a gasket. They're going to blow a gasket. And what I'm saying, the point I'm trying to make is, you know, Especially men who have lost their stingers. What I mean by you got these kids and they're you know on child support. Remember, child support is backdoor alimony. You're feeding great gonocracy with child support. If you've been married, divorced, or are married, you don't have a stinger. People don't really, especially out here in society, they don't really care about your grievances because they look at you as you don't have a stinger, you don't have any work. And it sucks. You know, I care about divorced men. I understand what they what they go through. I wouldn't know exactly because I've never been married and never will. But I see how society actually treats them. And yes, I do. have. I'm, I am sympathetic towards them. But the kicker is society is not. They don't give a fuck about you. They this is the reason why they're coming after this red pill community so bad is because there's a lot of bees in this community that still have their fucking stingers. They know the ones who don't, they just done moved on. They don't really care. They don't have no interest to really engage. They're actually really going their own way. Society does not care about them. They're looking at this community because this community, they see a lot of these men have fucking stingers. And at the end of the day, fellas, look, you know, you're disposable. If you think about it, all of the, the you know, think, think about the programs. Look at the programs. They're not geared towards you. You know, I still have here guys out here talking about, oh, you know, I want to actually have a son of my own. Listen, man, this another way that, that that is another prerequisite for you to engage in gynocracy is kids. I, I don't see, you know, if you don't go, not going to go the surrogate route, don't waste your time with this shit. Because at the end of the day, they're, they're not your fucking kids. Let's say you have a boy. Let's say you happen to be a masculine man. The woman's going to take the kid. We already know what is going to happen. She's going to take the kid. She's going to hold it against you. And she's going to get that Goliath of court to back her to get you to get the fuck away. What good is having a son? That is, if you're masculine, you are not able to pass down your views, your integrity, your morals, and your standards down to your son. Your son grows up to be feminine because he's taking on the traits of his mother, or who knows, he may join the Rainbow Coalition. What, what good is it? What good is the process in the first place? What good? Like it's it's like, you know, paying for a car that you can't fucking drive. What good is it? Having kids in the United States. I, you know, to me, it's getting to the point that it's a fool's errand. Now, oh, what about society? What about the population? Listen, anything that has billions of anything, there is no need for concern for it to make more. 
If you have $4 billion, you're not losing sleep at night for you to make more. Anything that has billions of anything, nobody's losing sleep for it to make more. So why should this be the case? What's happening is these people, they're projecting. They're projecting their biological desires onto the world, but they're trying to change it up to be something else. You don't really give a fuck about, oh, well, what about society? You don't really, these people don't really care. And I say this to say this. Guys, women have not evolved past Neanderthals. Women are, I mean, they're, they're stupid. They're childish. 99.9% of them are worthless. Most of them will not have any friends if they didn't have a vagina. I say this to say, with, with, with those things, these are facts. I could go on and on, but I'm trying real hard not to get you know, any type of strike on this channel. With all those things said, ask yourself, logically thinking, why are you jumping fences? Why are you running marathons? Why are you driving reckless? Why are you jumping out of helicopters to get to something that, like I told you, is childish, worthless, incompetent, lack empathy? They don't love. Don't buy that shit. That love, love is a male trait. That's the reason why we write the best love songs. Don't believe that shit. Why? Why are you going through leaps and hurdles? And what I'm saying is at some point, we have to check this primate behavior. That is a behavior of a fucking primate. And, you know, these are the same men like at the end of the day, we invented electricity. Look at all the things that we've done to change the world. Look at the advancements that our gender, the Y chromosome has done to change the world. Why are we still out here acting like nether apes? Why? Why are we still fighting these, you know, these wars for gonocracy? Why are we signing up to be cannon fodder for a system that does not give a fuck about you? Why? Purple pillars, why are you still at the bargaining table, bargaining with your logic against an irrational movement? Traditionalism does not exist in the United States. It's virtued out because it is a prerequisite into feminism. Traditionalism, it does not exist in the United States, in the West, period. This is a feminist country. This period is no way around it. Just like capitalism cannot have, exist with racism within the same country. You cannot have both. Neither could thrive without you letting go of one. And it's clearly America has chosen the capitalism route. It's clearly America has chosen the feminine. And we got to wake up, guys. You know, check out of this. You know, I like to give, before I go, you know, the monk community, I like to, you know, you guys are doing some, 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 some real strong things there. I'm not to that point yet. Honestly, I'm not. But I, I see what you guys are doing. I understand it. I understand it 100%. I don't appreciate the shame that goes you guys' way, but I do understand, you know, the bet, maybe sometime the best thing to do if the game is rigged is just don't even step on the field. The pumper dumpers, I understand it. They know the game is rigged, so what they do is they come in with their own cheat codes. I get it. And, you know, I... I I understand. It. I don't understand where all of the shame is coming from, but I do get it at the same time is you have guys that are still believing in traditionalism and they're not understanding the country that they live in is fit for feminism. And, you know, maybe it's about time to it's like a, it's like the, it's like politics. At some point, when you start to realize whether you have the left or you have the right. At some point, you're going to come to a realization that at the end of the day, neither side really has your best interest to the core in heart. And sometime you may have to find yourself moving in the middle, which is as an independent. MGTOW, Red Pill, represents an independent political party, represents the matrix, breaking out of this shit, anti-matrix philosophy. All right. This is the middle and I believe there's nothing wrong with it. This is a safe place to be. And you don't have to worry about getting yourself caught up in all these kangaroo courts. So 
this has just been my message to guys still bargaining with marriage. Dude, it, it, it's nothing but a farce. It is the prerequisite to feminism. You guys take care. More videos to come.